Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in War Thunder we are on the second 1.98 dev server and it's time to have a look at a new Soviet destroyer. This is the Project 56 of Spokoiny, I'm guessing is how you say it. It's a rank 3 battle rating 4.7 machine and to be honest the Soviets are kind of lacking in this area. You know, you only really have the Tashkent and that's about it when you compare them to America with of course their three 4.7s. It's kind of nice to see that they are getting some love. The Spokoiny comes after the new Trashimi, and they are both pretty similar machines uh, when it comes to the general power output. The new Trashimi coming out earlier in the year, uh, the main difference between them is that the Spokoiny is a lot faster, and they also have different torpedoes. So, when it comes to the Spokoiny, what are you seeing? Well, first of all, you have two dual sets of 130mm guns, uh, which have got a wonderful fire rate on them, and also four sets of quad 45 millimeters. So just in case there are any planes which decide to get anywhere near you, you have a lot uh, of backup. Then uh, also you have the torpedoes. The torpedoes are S536s. These have a max travel distance of 13 kilometers and also got 74 kilometers an hour. So they're pretty middling torpedoes. I wouldn't say they're obviously not the worst, But they're not the best around either. They're generally okay. The torpedo mode adds 5,000 meters, so these things come 7 kilometers stock, which isn't the best, but, you know, it's fine. Also gets access to depth charges, which are still useless in naval, so there's no point in talking about them. And the 130mm guns start off with HE in the form of the OF-42 with a lot of explosive mass in them. Bit of AP if you ever come up against some of those big, heavy, bad uh, cruisers which will just annihilate you. And also HEVT uh, to be able to deal with any planes or any smaller boats if you really feel like giving yourself a challenge instead of just bopping them with the HE. The 45mm are just HEF and HEFT across the board. There's no HEVT here for them it's literally just he all over the place and they have a crazy fire rate so they can put out a lot of explosive mass very quickly against many unsuspecting targets if we have a look at the x-ray view of the spokoni we can see that it has a really cool detailed ammo elevator on it which uh, is really nice it also has a pretty cool ammo elevator for the secondary guns uh, you can see it right here and right here Normally stuff like ammo elevators for a lot of the older machines were only really modelled for machines which have large turrets, uh, but this one, it's modelled for all of them, which I think is really cool. Then you have the engines in the centre, along with a bunch more ammunition. This thing is kind of made out of ammunition, and that pretty much happens when you have a bunch of 45mm. You have 32,000 rounds of 45mm, sorry, and then only 1,000 rounds of 130. So the actual large larger ammunition uh, boxes in this are actually in the center of the machine. So just shoot in the center, knock out the engines, and then pop the ammo. Have fun. Uh, it also has access to a fire director and tracking radar director, which is pretty cool. And also a search radar antenna on the top, just in case you want to see everything around you. The general armor, though, is lacking, uh, which makes sense, uh, because there aren't that many destroyers in game which really have any armor. This thing, its hull is 16 millimeters, its uh, superstructure is only 4 millimeters, so you'll be able to HE it to death pretty quickly. Also has 284 members of crew, not the best, but not the worst. And the only real armor that we see is on the front of the 130s, and it's still only 20 millimeters uh, around the place, so it's nothing to write home about at all. It does have a good speed though, 70 kilometers an hour is uh, very, very nice for it. So let's get into the test cell just so I can show you kind of how the guns go and also the uh, torpedoes as well, because I think those are the two main parts of the Spokoiny. So first of all, we have the search radar. So it is, of course, a, you know, uh, it is, of course, a, um, you know, it's an aircraft radar at the end of the day. You can see the 45s firing. They are incredibly effective at being able to pretty much deal with anything in the air. And if you want them to deal with boats, then, well, they can do that too. 
four forty-five millimeters is easily enough to be able to annihilate anything that uh, you know a machine can see. And also the hundred and thirty millimeters. So as I said, they have a decent reload on them. It's not as good as the reloads on some of the machines that you see. You know, such as the uh, <laughs> such as the uh, you know the the Tower of the Seas the Project 35 and also its sister ship. So you can see the the fact that the main armament is underwhelming in terms of how many there are. There are destroyers of equal BR which have double the amount of main turrets that this machine has. At least the fire rate is okay so it might be able to keep up but it's still not going to be able to put out as much power as let's say a Somers or a Porter. Um, but if we compare it to some of the other nations which don't have crazy gunships, uh, you know, like the Germans, it will be able to put out uh, enough power to be able to deal with them. So yeah, and then the torpedoes are sat in the center of the machine, as you can see here. Really nice uh, animations on the torpedoes themselves. And there we go. So yeah, it's one of those machines which has a little bit of everything to it. You know, it has good secondary firepower, apart from these 45s are really, really struggling. Um, <laughs> let's just kill this guy, holy Jesus. Bonk. Hull break him, because everything over or including 100 millimeters will hull break uh, the machine. But it has uh, decent 130s on it, the 45s are nice to see, and also uh, from what we found with the Neutrashimi, which was the premium uh, which was added before, one of the nice things about the 45s is even at range they do a ton of damage to enemy vessels, uh, so you can just keep pumping out the DPM, which is something that is not always easy to do in naval, especially since some guns have a very, very large reloads. So you just have to make sure that your AI gunners, or if you're controlling them, you just have to make sure they keep putting out the damage and doing a ton of damage to ships. And what I mean by this is if you control them, you know, you can have so many guns on looking at this enemy at once. You can just kind of throw out all the shots in the world. And this is how a lot of destroyers die when it comes to uh, naval forces. If I do like a little bit of a demonstration, even though the 45s only have HE, you've got to remember this BR, pretty much nothing has, you know, a ton of armor on it. Uh, it isn't something which is, you know, really thought of uh, in general. So you can see like this machine here, right? So we have access to, I think, three of the guns. And all we have to do is just work it down uh, the line and be able just to put as much damage as possible all over it. And you can see the amount of firepower that we can throw at this machine, you know, as a wave. And it isn't penning anything, but it doesn't need to, because eventually it'll just keep doing damage over time. And anything that gets close to you, whether it be a destroyer, whether it be uh, something else, they will get annihilated by those guns as they get closer. Unfortunately, I'm slightly overshooting them right now. Uh, so I'm just going to actually hold this back and hopefully this will be able to deal with it and try and hit that hull of the machine. But I remember there was a lot of reports when it came out, this is what you were just able to do. You were able just to... Uh... <laughs> Why is it doing that? Uh, <laughs> you were just able to just do this and just over time really cripple the machine as a general use. So it isn't just, you know, the 130 millimeters that can do a lot of damage. You can see the amount of firepower that you can put out when it comes to the 45s. And you can see now that we've ranged it properly, the amount of damage that it's doing down the vehicle. This can cripple it incredibly quickly uh, when you need a machine to be crippled. So it is definitely something that uh, will be nice to have. And with 70 kilometers an hour for a destroyer, that is pretty nice. You will be able to move around at a decent click. And also at the same time, you know, you will be able to maneuver because this thing isn't the largest machine in the world, you know, uh, compared to other destroyers, um, you'll be able to maneuver a lot better around torpedoes. You'll be able to deal with more threats by just uh, trying to maneuver yourself around, be able to go, uh, you know, front end towards targets and maybe get only those 30 millimeters firing at something, 130 millimeters firing at something. But at the end of the day, you make your silhouette incredibly small, so it's a lot harder to hit you. 
Some of the firing angles on some of these guns are kind of annoying, uh, meaning that it's going to be hard sometimes to be able to get relatively good fire on top of machines. But I think overall that won't be an issue, um, especially if, you know, as long as you angle like this um, towards enemies, you should be completely fine with that idea. Hopefully uh, this machine does well in the game. It is one which, uh, with the Soviet tech tree, the destroyers are really lacking. Uh, they are probably, right now, obviously Italy has just entered, so we can't really, you know, discuss them in a meta way. But the Soviets do have the worst destroyers in the game. Um, they're worse uh, in terms of torpedoes, they're worse in terms of guns, they're worse in generally in terms of uh, survivability. So to add more to it with different quirks, such as these 45s and the 130s, more modern age destroyers, I think is a good way to go to try and address the issues that have been found with these machines, which is they are lacking firepower. At 4.7 though, it means that it's going to be cruiser food whenever it gets up-tiered, and that is going to be very sad for this machine, because it definitely won't do as well against uh, cruisers as some of the other 4.7s there. It doesn't have the torpedoes for it, and it definitely doesn't have the guns. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Conte Baraka, Daniel Stanton, E. Love Goat, J. Wilt, Martinez, Trigger Hippie, Eugene Terry, and also Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.